I loved my TJ. I oh, still TJ's think it's the really best looking Jeep out there. You know, I absolutely loved it. Mm. I um, I see. Well, when the four doors came out, I wasn't interested at all. And then I seen an Anvil one, and it was like I fell in love. And I said, I'm going to put a really high price tag on my TJ, <laughs> and if it sells, I'm going to get a four door. It sold the next day. Hey there, Jeepers. I'm your host, Tony, and I'm thrilled to be bringing you another episode of the Jeep Talk Show. We've got an amazing show for you today with an incredible guest who's going to share their experiences, tips, and insights into the world of Jeeping. So whether you're a seasoned off-road veteran or that newbie just starting out, this show is for you. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. So are you going to Easter Jeep Safari this year? So uh, I've been wanting to go for many, many years. People have been asking me to go for many, many years. And with work and everything else that was going on, it just didn't seem, uh, and frankly, I didn't want to drive uh, 20 hours. (laughs) So, But uh, damn it, I'm going this year. So come uh, hell or high water and, you know, those things could happen. uh, I'm going to be going out there to uh, Easter Jeep Safari, planning on uh, being there on uh, starting uh, be, be there a full day on Tuesday and then staying there through at least through Friday, Saturday or Sunday. We'll just have to see how it goes. Now, I'm planning on doing it on the cheap, which I am told by by several JTS uh, members and JTS team members that there's lots of camping out there. Uh, so uh, I'm planning on taking a tent. I've looked up uh, how to get a, a toilet seat to fit on a five-gallon bucket. <laughs> so it should be a lot of fun. I do enjoy camping. I, uh, I just don't enjoy being away from a shower for multiple days. And, and others around me appreciate that, uh, that sentiment as well. <laughs> so uh, are, you, uh, are you planning on going to Easter Jeep Safari? Maybe you are planning on going now knowing that uh, Jeep Talk Show is going to be there. And it's more than just me. We're going to have five to eight uh, Jeeps. Uh, of JTS listeners and team members that are going to be out there. So uh, there may be a way, uh, if you if you could find a way out there, there may be a way for you to ride along because we're going to have lots of people, lots of Jeeps. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting up with uh, Greg Henderson of Unofficial Use Only. Uh, Ken Tudersky from um, uh, Tyree Lights is going to be there. Tom Zelinski uh, with Four Fest Events is going to be there. So I'm looking forward to meeting those people in person for the very first time even though I've been talking to them uh, on the phone and on the show and uh, just having a great uh, time building relationships with them. It's going to be nice to uh, to see them in person. And I might get inv- uh, invited to a few things and uh, introduced to a few people. So really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And frankly, I'm just really excited about seeing the scenery. And uh, Greg has told me that he's going to show me some, uh, some things that are just off the trail having to do with uh, rocks and fossils and even uh, dinosaur footprints or feet prints. How's it go? Footprints, footprints. Tell me, tell me in the uh, voicemails and stuff. <laughs> you guys like correcting our pronunciations anyway. So, but tonight we have a great interview and uh, we're going to get right to that now. Alrighty ho kids, it's time for another Jeep Talk Show interview and tonight we're going to be talking with Mike. He is from Cargo Dog and I, 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 I God dang it, Mike, I want to say CargoDog.com, but dog is the dot com. So it's Cargo.Dog, which I always like telling people uh, on the interview well, where we're going, who we're interviewing, what website to go to so that they can uh, look around while they're listening to the, uh, to the interview. So Mike's background, uh, playing in the dirt from mini bikes to dirt bikes, three-wheelers, quads, oh, three-wheelers, the kiss of death. The neighbors had one of those, and the, the, the neighbor girl hit a tree with it, and uh, hit, she physically hit the tree and had a bruise that was about uh, half her body. anyway (laughs) uh off-road buggies and now uh, of course jeeps uh as a 12 a 12 year old in the 70s he drove a truck and owned his own motorcycle shop for almost 20 years he founded cargo dog in 2021 making cargo management systems for jeep jku and jlu models and now the jt gladiator as well you should include the gladiator there because i have one mike well, yep. We we had a when we brought out the the Wrangler model, we had a lot of people that asked us about the Gladiator, and of course, being new, we focused on the Wrangler, and then it was time. So, 
Um, we're actually, we've had a, quite a few pre-orders and they should be available by the first of the year t- for everybody. Very neat. So uh, how do you get geared up for something like this? Because it, you, you really just started this product and you're taking orders. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're not building these things in your garage. No, we're not. We actually have a, a company called Fabtech Machine that's out of Covington, Ohio, and they build them for us. Um, this was an invention I came up with just because I needed it. You know, <laughs> it was something that I needed. I We were loading gear into my Jeep, going on a trip. We do some overlanding, and our dog goes with us all the time. And I'm looking at that stack of cushions thinking, man, I could be storing stuff there. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'll buy something. And I looked at the market. There's a few options available. They just really weren't what I wanted, a little more permanent than what I wanted. I wanted the ability to be able to switch back and forth in case I needed my seats. And um, so I invented it for myself. Well, that was going to be my next question. I was hoping that the, it was that way where you could take the storage system out, put the seats in. Or I believe you were telling me before we started the interview that you can actually uh, maybe have the cargo system and at least one seat uh, still in your Jeep. Kind of a, uh, I guess it would be like a jump seat on a plane for those pilots that are uh, deadheading back or flying back and not, not piloting the plane. Right. Well, the, the first one I built was just a one piece, you know, covered the whole back. And, you know, um, through friends in the Jeep groups and stuff, they were like, you know, well, sometimes I have an, a, an occasional, you know, third person going along or a grandchild or a kid, you know. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, heck, man, we can make that, you know, I can I can divide that up to a 6040 to run that small seat. And it makes it easier to get it in and out because it's two piece. It's not a heavy unit and only weighs about 54 pounds, but it's bulky. So breaking it into two pieces made it easier for uh, getting it in and out and also for shipping purposes because oh, you yes. can <laughs> take it into a smaller package, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and you, you just, you want to, when I, I'm a very detail oriented, I wanted to offer as many options as I could with it. And um, so that's how we came about that. And it's it, to take your seats out for me, because I've done it a million times. To actually take the seats out and put the unit in or reverse it, take the unit out and put the seats in, it's a 10 minute job for me. It's like everything else with our Jeeps. You know, the first time we struggle with them, our soft tops, all that stuff. Once you get it figured out, very easy process to move them back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I would assume you just uh, store the seats in the garage? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so, uh, now the, the, the name of the, the website anyway is cargo dog. What is the dog part of this the, uh, you, I think you mentioned it, that it was part of the reason for developing this. Yep. Well, we have a, a 90 pound Doberman who goes everywhere with us. Of course. A lot of Jeep people have the Jeep dogs. They love to travel with their dogs. And we all know when you fold the seat down in a Wrangler, they never quite fold flat. The headrest is up against the back seat, so there's no lean in your seat back. And there's a huge trench where the back of the Jeep in the in the back of the or the back of the Jeep and the back of the seat. So we always had to stuff blankets in there so his feet wouldn't, you know, get down in there. So I wanted to make it a nice flat level surface. So when the dog's in there, he's got his nice area to lay on. And it's multi-purpose because we actually have a tent that goes off the back of our Jeep because I'm not lifting the 90-pound Doberman into a rooftop tent. <laughs> so we sleep in the Jeep. So that gives you that flat surface, and it just works out really well, and people have accepted it. I mean, they, they see the, the benefits of it, and um, you know it works out real well. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, and I think Jeepers are always looking for some uh, more storage space. Uh, and and this certainly fits that bill. Um, so, what, just from an overlanding perspective, uh, not not necessarily that you're an overlander, but if you're sleeping in the jeep, actually, my definition of overlanding is: Are you going someplace, and are you taking a sandwich with you? If you got you're a right. sandwich, then you're overlanding, right? Right. <laughs> now, we actually we we camped with a camper for years. I actually pulled the camper with my jeep, and. Um, the campgrounds were crowded. They're expensive. You don't get to see that you, you're taking off to go get to, to see the site. So we decided we, you know, we wanted to get into doing some overlanding. Uh-huh. And uh, so we do overland. I mean, we're not 
serious, serious into it. We're getting more of our gear built up. And um, the nice thing about it is with the three compartment storage, the one on either side, I have my tools, my recovery gear, uh, a couple spare parts, some specialty tools that I think I might need to get, you know, occasionally that stay in there all the time. I never have to move them out. My, the back of my Jeep is empty, you know, and, it, and then the other side we use for whatever we're doing, you know, that day. Our middle section's really nice because it's driver accessible. You can reach between the seats and driver accessible. So keeping your GPS radios and all that, and we have charging ports in there, two USB, one cigarette style. So you can keep your electronics charged, your GoPros, you know, your radios, all that stuff. Uh, nice firearm storage because it's all lockable and it's bolted down and it's it's a secure, uh, as secure a system as you're probably going to find. Yeah, the and the, the center section is really neat. Now, the, are, are these separate or are they open between the compartments or, or can you do either? Um, like if you, you want to put a long rifle in there. Could you? No, they're they're separated. That that's actually on the horizon because we have a lot of those guys sure. that are interested in that. So, um, how, that's, how many AR fifteens can I get in there? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. Well, and, and not only that, we have the crossbow guys and the yep. bow hunting guys, duck hunters, you know, they, shotguns. Those shotguns are very long. Exactly. You know, so it's something on the horizon that we're we're going to pursue when we get caught up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they're separate. So each, each, uh, each side and the middle are a separate locking compartment. And what we, what we did purposely on them is we have one key that opens both sides. The other key just opens the middle. So keeping valuables locked in there, you tell your buddy, Hey, go get this out of my side box, you know, or your, or somebody to get it out of there. They don't have access to things that you don't want them to have access to. Right. Uh, you're familiar with bolt lock, aren't you? Yes. I, we actually, um, I actually have bolts on mine. Okay. It, um, any future things maybe working with bolt lock? Because, I mean, it's really nice having the one key for everything. We, we're we going to start carrying them, but the problem with the bolt lock, they're only good for the JKs. You know the the, J, the JLUs and the and the gladiators all have a fob, and nobody's going to want to dig that key out of their fob to open that. You press compart- a button. You press a button, and it flips oh, really? out. I I didn't realize. Oh that. yeah, no, it's it's built into the fob, and there's a little button on there. And actually, if you put it in your pocket and you're not careful, the the key comes out in your pocket. <laughs> oh really? Really? Well, we no, are, it works we out. I've got a few bolt lock things that uh, on the gladiator, and yeah, you just press the button, stick it in there, set it, and now you just use it. So, I mean, it, it, you it's your product. You should do what you want to mm-hmm. do. But anytime I see something with locks. I remember having to go through so many keys, like my right. XJ. You know, you have you have one, at least one key. But I back way back when my Chevrolet truck, Chevrolet vehicles, it was two keys: one for the trunk and one for the starter. So, and then you know, house keys, everything else. If I can minimize keys, I love it. Uh, and uh, Bolt Lock's a great product. I mean, I'm not here oh. to advertise for them. I just no, they are a great product. And like I said, I have them on mine, and I, I've actually got a few sets for different customers that have wanted them. Mm-hmm. And we are looking into we we definitely were looking into carrying them for the JKs as an option. Yeah, you know, that's you great. Know, that's great. Well, hey, see, this is a Jeep Talk Show million dollar idea, and we don't provide the go. money though. <laughs> <laughs> just the idea. <laughs> yeah, and that seems to be the problem is the money. <laughs> of course. It always is, isn't it? Uh, right. Okay. And then the other thing I was going to ask you, especially since you're going to be putting the valuables in there and firearms that you don't want other people or children getting a hold of, how secure are these? I mean, what size, uh, what thickness metal, uh, and how much effort do you have to put into getting in there? I mean, if you got a battery-powered Sawzall or a grinding wheel, okay, fine. That's going to that, that's gonna be pretty quick work. <clears throat> But crowbar, uh, big screwdriver, what are we looking at here as far as security? Well, you know, nothing's in, in no. that's, that, you know, but it's 16 gauge steel. They are bolted down to where the, the factory seat bolts bolt on the, the feet on the seat bolts. So you mm-hmm. have two heavy duty bolts and we've actually reinforced the bottom to make it secure. The nice thing about it is if you have your doors on, they can't even get at the side locks. Oh. You know, without, without opening the doors. Mm-hmm. So, so if you had your soft top on and somebody was to say, "Hey, I'm looking for an opportunity here," they can't get at the side latches. We, oh, 
I over-engineered it, made it more secure than what it probably really needed to be. But I like that better than not being secure enough. Oh, yeah. And um, really, if somebody looks in there, unless they know what they're looking for, they just think your seats are down. Yeah. I was going to say, just oh. be having the not just keeping people from seeing uh, does a lot of stuff because they've got a, a measure. Is it worth my time to get in there and look? I mean, what's there? I mean, I have it may be empty. Even if it's even if they know there's a storage system, it may be empty. It's probably not empty, but do I really need another tow strap? <laughs> you know right. that type right. of thing. Uh, just right. and, and like it, on the, the old out of sight, out of mind is a exactly good, a good thing to have. And um, they are really secure. I mean, yeah, the the, the thief that wants to get in, he's probably going to figure out a way, but it's going to take him a little bit. Yep. Um, well, very cool. And now you got a place. If you go to the beach, you got a place to uh, besides your shoe to put your uh, keys and uh, <laughs> everything else in. Although I guess you have to take a key with you. Um, but uh, yeah, and that's the other thing. I'm glad that you mentioned because I wanted to. I, I noticed that in this uh, center console, you have uh, it looks like uh, maybe a, a battery gauge and then several uh, like switches and things. What all, you went through that? Uh, what all is in there though? Let's go through that again. Okay, so you it, inside there you have a master switch that turns the whole unit on, okay? And then you have two USB ports, one cigarette-style port, and then we put a, a, a volt, volt meter on there. It probably doesn't have to be there, but I like it, and I've actually, you know, used it to see what I, you know, where my voltage is at when things are running, you know? And... um so if you the master if you turn the master switch off everything's off. If you have it on, your lights come on on a switch that when the doors open the lights come on. Mm -hmm. So they're not on all the time. So it's a refrigerator style switch, you know, that that shuts them off. So I've had my Jeep set for weeks with that master switch on, you know, and that the the illumination for the um the plugs in the in the uh, gauge is on. And being LED, there's really no draw to it. Right. It doesn't doesn't affect anything. So uh, what are the, the the charging ports in there for? I mean, silly question, but I guess it's more the how much room is available in there for, for charging. I mean, certainly phones, uh, battery packs, that type of thing makes sense. But, I mean, this thing is not big enough for like a refrigerator or anything. Right. No, you wouldn't want – when we actually uh, say that in our owner's manual, you do not want to run – any bigger stuff off it. It's for charging your devices, your your GRMS radios, um, your GoPros, um, any of that stuff that you you know you always be charged up. You can have them in there charging all the time. So when you go to get them, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, what on the center one specifically? What's the depth on that one? How how deep is that? It, it is uh, three and a half inches deep, which doesn't sound very deep, mm -hmm. but you'd be amazed at the stuff you can get in there. Oh, sure. And the mm -hmm. the, the side units, uh, because this, if and if you guys are not over at Cargo Dog uh, having a look at this, uh, I'll just describe it. Basically, it's a storage uh, on left and right uh, side and a, a shallow storage in the center that we're talking about. So uh, on the, the left and right units, uh, how deep are, are those? Those are seven and a half inches deep. Okay. So certainly, you actually get you could actually get like a a, a Lion Energy battery, you know, uh, one of the good lithium batteries, and uh, you could mount that in there if you needed to. I have a customer that mounted um, his ARB compressor in there. Oh yeah, and you know had it all set up with plugs because he said if I'm not using this, I don't need my compressor. You know, so it, it comes out. So we've had a lot of different uh, things happen. You know, with with people putting different things in there. It's kind of neat to see what they come up with. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, and do you get a lot of feedback? Do you get a lot of pictures and stuff from uh, from customers? Yeah, we do. We actually do. Um, uh, we, we've had a, a guy that uh, I believe he trains, um, uh, I don't know if they're police dogs or if they're just service dogs, but he totally decked his out. Um, he didn't want carpet, so he did the a bunch of non-skid stuff on there and um yeah they sent us a lot of pictures and we get some we we get no we have had no knocking on wood right now no negative feedback everything we get is yeah i thought i was gonna like it now that i have it i don't i i don't won't know how i went without it you get a little and, scared whenever you whenever you read that you know <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna <laughs> like it and I don't damn it <laughs> <laughs> well you know you think about it 
we all have a wench on the front of our Jeep, uh-huh. which when you need it, you need it. Exactly. I had my Jeep. My Jeep's eight years old. I've used my wench probably five or six times. Right. You know, but when I needed it, I needed it. This is something that you will use every day. You will you will use it every day. It's just something that will become part of. Yep, I've got this with me. I've got this with me. I don't have to worry about it. It's all here. And we actually had a friend that was out west and put his Jeep on his side. And everything was good. You know, they got it running again. They finished out their trip. He drove it home. But he's my biggest supporter now, he said, because his stuff went everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, this will keep it contained. So um, one of the things that happens to a lot of people when they're carrying around their uh, laptop, their, their backpack that has their laptop in it, uh, thieves will definitely break in that, into that because I guess the computers are uh, an easy thing that they can sell and make some uh, decent uh, cash on. Uh, this is easily uh, big enough to, to store a laptop in, out of sight, locked up, uh, and easy to get to. I mean, just open up the back door. Uh, open up the uh, the cargo area, lock it up. Uh, the, I should say, open up the cargo dog, put your laptop in there, and uh, now you can feel pretty secure. I mean, if it's good enough for your uh, for your handgun, uh, it should be good enough for your laptop, right? Exactly. Yeah, there's plenty of room for you know all kinds. Of, that's we call it a multi-purpose because you know there's the business guy that drives his Jeep every day that has all that stuff with him camera people one of our customers oh, is a yes. is a videography he's got his cameras they're expensive keeps all of them in there and another thing that people don't think about when you're out four wheeling where do you want your weight as low as you can get it mm-hmm. all your tools all that stuff is down there in the belly of your jeep and it's keeping that weight down low yeah, it really is good. And if you get enough weight down there, you can take 90-degree turns going pretty fast, I've found. <laughs> yeah, I haven't <laughs> tried that yet, but I'll take your word for well, it. Well, you got to put a lot of lead in there is, uh, is the, only, the problem. Oh, and, and that's a— Well, and another thing that you deal with, too, um, uh, you know, I don't know if the JLs are quite that way because I don't have one, but the JKs, if your tank's full, you get a lean. You get a lean to the I've right side. This. Yeah, I heard this last night on our roundtable episode. John was uh, was commenting on that, saying it kind of leans a little bit. Uh, when they all the do. It's called the JK lean, and I think the JLs also are that way with the tank on that side. Now, I take and put all my tools and stuff on the left side, and I ballast myself out a little That's bit. That's a good idea. That's a real good yeah. idea. I haven't been under the, uh, the, the JT that much, but I think that the... Uh, the gas tank is uh, on. It's like not a, really a saddle tank, but kind of a saddle tank on the the Gladiator, and it is on the passenger side. That's is that the tr- true for the JK and the the JL? Yes, yeah. yes. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, well, very good, very good. So I, I actually got a uh, one over here to your Instagram, which we'll talk about more here in the in the uh, towards the end of the show or the end of the interview. And I got to see your uh, your lovely dog. Uh, and now, <laughs> He, he looks like he's interested. Just the look on his face. He goes, are we going somewhere? I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> he loves He loves going with us. And it's so funny because we're out, we'll be out on a trail and I'll look up in the mirror and watch him. And if a tree comes, he'll duck, you know, and he's watching everything that's going. <laughs> he's paying and attention. That's great. <laughs> he, he, he absolutely has a blast. There's a few times that we've been on some steep hills that he doesn't like it very much, but um, he gets over it. Well, at least he doesn't have to fall off the seat and, and fall down to the, the foot area and then climb back up and do all that right. gyration. So um, now these these uh, storage units, they're complete, right? I mean, it has a uh, definitely has a top, but it has a bottom and all the sides. Yep. So because yep. I, I know some of the, you know, there's a storage uh, look area under the, uh, the back seat for the Gladiator, but it's all open. Uh, yep. I mean, you know, and, and there's really no way of locking it. And I've seen some solutions where they put a uh, like a border around it, and uh, but do something about locking it. But it's still it's not a complete storage. It's not a can self-contained deal. These are self-contained. Each e- e- all three of them separately are self-contained. Yep. Yep, they have a bottom sides on them. Yep, they're self-contained. So um, we uh, we we mentioned earlier about that there's no connection between the three boxes. I mean, uh, where you could like put something really long in there, like a shotgun or something. Um, and you mentioned that's uh, that's on the drawing board. Do you have an idea when that might be available? 
Um, I would say probably if when if other things go right, um, <laughs> our next market's actually going to be the Tacomas because those guys are on us. They've been bugging us since day one. I'm probably thinking toward the end of, of next year, we should be starting to work on that, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually got drawings for it and I've got my guys working on it to, to kind of make a prototype up already, you know, mm-hmm. when they get a chance. So, um, it's something that we, we definitely are, are going to do. It's just a matter of how things go out, you know? Yeah. So being the main guy, that means you're going to get one first, right? So you can try it out for yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I know uh, business has a lot. Uh, running a business is kind of difficult, but that is one of the perks, right? Oh, I'm sure it's, it's exciting good. when you draw it out and then it, it, it shows up and you go, you're looking at it and you go, wow, I actually drew this thing up and here it is in real life. Yeah, it's a, it's a little surreal. I mean, this whole journey has been a little surreal, you know, because it, like I said, I built it just for myself. We won an award at SEMA, you know, that was absolutely insane. The year, yeah, the year that you, know, you came out with it, that's that's amazing. Yeah, and then, you know, and then, um, you know, when I when we got our finished units, you know, it was just like, man, this is so cool, you know, and, and then our Gladiator won, and it's like, this is so cool, you know, and um, yeah, it's it's really cool to watch it build. So have you if you can if you can talk about it what is the most famous person celebrity or otherwise the YouTube influencer that you've uh, sold one of these things to or or I should say have one because you may have even provided one to them for, for you know for support of the product Uh Jason Lewis is probably he's uh auto edits I don't know if you know who he is he was a cameraman for Dirt Every Day um he absolutely loves it. That's I a have shame. contact with him a lot. Yeah, it's a shame about dirt every day. Uh, I yeah. guess they ran out of dirt, huh? It must be. <laughs> but Jason's doing good. He's got a he's got a really good YouTube channel, and um, you, you know, he's doing good. But yeah, he's probably. And then you know, I always wonder if pe- if some maybe some of these people use aliases when they order. Oh you yeah, because I because I get some crazy names that come through. <laughs> Boy, as, as long as the credit card clears, I guess it's okay. That's that's all good, yeah. So speaking of uh, credit card clearing, uh, what do these things cost? Um, they run fourteen ninety five, and we do actually run uh, specials here and there. Um, right now, we have one going for Christmas. If um, uh, you use Cargo Dog Winston, it's a ten percent. And actually, I was going to tell you that we're going to give you guys one for for your listeners oh thank you uh, jeep top 10 is a 10 percent discount that is active right now and um yeah well, there's no li- there's no end to that one so any of your listeners that are interested if they put jeep top 10 all lowercase no space it's 10 percent discount excellent Oh, yeah. Our listeners love discount codes. So thank you a lot for that, Mike. Now, uh, I've got to ask you just again, scrolling through your your Instagram here, uh, and it's uh, Cargo Dog 2021, right? Is that correct? The right place? Yes. Uh, Cargo I'd, Dog 2021. Uh, I'd like to know, and, and this is, you don't have to answer this question as far as the amount, but how much did you have to pay this uh, lovely bottle? That is in some of these pictures. Uh, she gets paid a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep, must she be a loved like, one then. If if she gets yeah. paid a lot, <laughs> she 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 does all of our social media. She puts as much time into this as I do. Oh, and, and marketing is so important. Is yep. social media the only thing you're doing for marketing, or are you doing other kind of marketing? Um, we actually um, we're just now getting into it, and. Um, we are uh, going to be with Extreme Terrain. We're working on that right now, mm-hmm. and they're doing some marketing for us. And then we have uh, a guy named Alex Schultz, Four Wheel Drive Talk, FWT Talk. He does uh, a lot of advertising for us. Um, we just got to the point where we could afford to do it. Yeah, you know? that's that's always been our problem is uh, right. uh, marketing. Uh, you, you, I always say, you know, uh, we can't afford marketing because we all have Jeeps. Right. <laughs> if we didn't have Jeeps, then maybe we could afford something else, but then it wouldn't be as much fun. It wouldn't be worth living. Right. Yeah, I asked about the marketing just simply because I know how difficult that is, and uh, I was uh, hoping to steal some uh, some tidbits of information from you. So, yeah, uh, right. so now you got the cargo stuff. Do you have any other products or maybe any products on the horizon? Um, yeah, we're actually looking at 
some uh, some stuff for the the two doors. The two door guys have been bugging us hard, <laughs> and um, you know they like what they see. So we're we're going to explore that area again. That's going to be that's going to be storage stuff. Um, but right now we've got a lot on our plate of what we want to get done as far as the storage market because storage is so key. Maybe, mm-hmm. You know we yeah. all need it. Um, well, the two doors have a lot of room. The two doors need it even more so. Exactly. And, you know, the what I like about our storage, and this is kind of what I tell people, you gain space without losing any space mm-hmm. because your seats are going to be there anyways, you know, so um, and you you haven't put a big box in the back of your Jeep that, you know, you're going to, you know, that's you're going to have to work around. And it's down low, too. I mean, I, I've seen those storage solutions or gladiators where it takes up the entire bed and it's you know it's it's sitting up in the bed so now the weight is up higher and i right. mean it is a lot of storage but of course you don't have a bed anymore <laughs> and uh you know it, you're more likely to not need those that that back seat than you are uh the bed to carry something around in um so i'm thinking that the and of course i'm sure you've looked at this technically and i haven't but I would think that uh, the TJs would uh, just absolutely love to have someone like this. And I know you're busy. This is a brand new product, but have you have you thought about the TJs as far as uh, I mean? They got a back seat. There there should be some storage there capability, right? Yeah, they've got a little they've got a little footwell area in there that, and that's what I meant with the two doors is uh, the TJs and the JKs because we've had all of them. The problem you run into with the TJs, they haven't built them for so long. When you get into building stuff, they you know the your marketing people will tell you don't go after that market. Sure, it's it's too old. But when you have enough people asking about it, then you say, well, you know what? There's still a lot of guys that are running them, mm-hmm. you know, and they're interested. Um, so it's something that we're definitely going to check into. Well, you know, and the the difficulty with uh, killing the TJ is the 4.0 liter uh, engine and the great uh, standard transmission they come with, uh, drivetrain wise. I mean, the rust might get them depending on where they are, but <laughs> the the engine and the the drivetrain are going to be going strong for uh, up to 300,000 miles. So, uh, yeah, I, I I think that, uh, and of course, they, the TJs have held their value very well. It's kind of hard to to spend uh, $1,400 on a $500 XJ, if you get what I'm right, saying. Right, right. <laughs> we have a lot of the XJ guys that are interested, too. It's amazing, the people that come out of the woodwork. And they build their own, you know. They build a wood platform or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had a TJ before we had this Jeep. I love my TJ. I oh, still think it's the best-looking Jeep out there. You know, I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. I um, I see. Well, when the four doors came out, I wasn't interested at all. And then I seen an Anvil one, and it was like I fell in love. And I said, I'm going to put a really high price tag on my TJ, <laughs> and if it sells, I'm going to get a four door. It sold the next day. Oh yeah. But well, <laughs> so, just curious, what year and how much? It was a '99. Of course, I had I had you know it was clean and I had some uh, good axles. I had some built Dana 44s under it, mm-hmm. and that was eight years ago. And I got fourteen thousand for it. Oh, that's a good deal. Uh, yeah, I, it was. A, I don't want to sell it price. Right. You know? Yeah. So I think we. Um, I got my wife's 2003 TJ for ten five about seven years ago, and I thought we got a really good price on that, but it didn't have any after aftermarket stuff on it. It was just a stock. Uh, TJ, no lift or anything. So, uh, you know, and and I always recommend that to people if they're going to be buying a used Jeep, get one that uh, hasn't been lifted because chances are it hasn't been abused (laughs) off-road. Unless you know the person that owned it. Right. You know, that that, that helps. But again, what you run into too is it's the stuff that you want, you know, that they put on there the stuff you want. Right. So I'm kind of like, I like starting fresh myself. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's kind of fun doing it yourself too and having the things on there that you want. Yeah. Uh, it was it was funny. I didn't because uh, the the first Jeep for us was the XJ. We, uh, I still have it. It's a '98 XJ, one owner XJ, and uh, I learned about the TJ more about the TJ, which is basically the same drivetrain as the XJ. <clears throat> but I learned about the TJ whenever we got my wife's X model, and then my uh, youngest daughter got a 2001 uh, Sport. And I was surprised to find out that it came with a Dana 44. I did not know that they came with Dana 44s. My wife has a Dana 35 on hers, but of course it's because of the X model. 
And then we got a 2005 for my older daughter. And again, Dana 44 rear. Still had the, the problematic Dana 30. It's not horrible, but it's not, right. you know, it's not a 35. But, <laughs> you know, it's still an issue when you want to start going with larger tires and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's very interesting what, uh, what Jeep has done to it. And I was just really, really happy when I went to get the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator. It was Dana 44's front and rear straight from the factory. I got the max tow package. So I've got the basically the Rubicon axles uh, without the lockers correct yeah yeah and see my 99 had the 35 and the 30 with and it was a manual so it had the 305 gears in it yeah it was terrible yes you know and so there used to be a company in michigan called uh, rock solid performance they built axles i don't know what happened to them but they built me 44s i bought brand new housings and had them build me 44s with yukon lockers and 4340 act you know and yeah. i put them under that tj that tj was it was a good vehicle so did broken. you did you cry a little bit after it was gone <laughs> you know what the biggest problem is it's right in the town i live in and i see it every day <laughs> and i bet you i bet you it won't even make eye contact with you anymore so it's like i, I you're dead to me <laughs> you know he actually i talked to the guy he, he's an older gentleman he bought it but he'd never really had a toy he bought it and i told i've told him many times i've talked to him whenever you're ready to sell it let me know mm-hmm yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, great. I mean, you got somebody that's really enjoying the, the 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 TJ. I think they probably know what they have. Does does he take it off road at all? Yeah. I mean, nothing extreme. Um, but he does get out on some trails and mm-hmm. stuff. But he loves it. Yeah. I mean, no, there's nothing wrong with a, a nice trail. Just off road. Yep. Yep. Get yep, out there. You know. But he's. I mean, it's. You can tell it's his pride and joy. He takes very good care of it. So that makes me happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's making somebody happy with something that you created. Just like these uh, these cargo dog things. I mean, I'm sure it makes you really happy seeing not only getting the cash, but also two people enjoying and making use of something that you've you've designed and, uh, and uh, made, made available for them. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I, I tell everybody my... It's going to be complete for me when someday I'm away from home you know, not just in the next town, but I may be in another state and I see somebody open their Jeep and I see it in there. Yeah. That's going to be the day that I'm really going to say, yep, it, it worked. We kind of see that with Jeep talk show stickers. Sometimes somebody will uh, send a picture and say, hey, look, there's a Jeep talk show sticker right here in the wild. And, you know, it's yeah. just like it, somebody that, uh, you know, wasn't posting it for themselves, but just somebody that saw it. So it's really cool, much to a lesser degree than actually building a big box uh, like that, because there's a lot of effort into that. Um, so, uh, was it difficult? And I, I don't want to. I don't want you to give away secrets. But was it difficult finding somebody to build this for you? Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird story. Um, when I built it for myself, I had no intentions of doing anything. It was for me, right? And my cousin is a patent lawyer, <laughs> and he said, "You need to patent that." Yeah, and I said, "Why? You know why?" He goes, well, license it to somebody, you know, you know, do something with it. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, patents cost a lot of money. Well, I'm a motorcycle mechanic. He had a 70 or has a 72 Triumph that hadn't run in four in 35 years. My goodness. He said, he said, get my Triumph going and I'll get you your patent deal. You know, that's a deal. So I got the patent and I said, now what do I do with it? So my thing was, okay, I took a couple classes on marketing, you know, or I mean on licensing. Mm-hmm. And who's going to be interested in that? DZ truck boxes. Man, they're they're going to eat that up. That's what they do. They don't even want to talk to me. Right. You know. And we don't take outside ideas. I called a few other companies. We don't take outside ideas. So through calling different places to try to figure something out, I stumbled across a company called Ideal Strategic Partners. They help you build businesses. And I said, yeah, I thought I was calling somebody, and I forget the company I was calling. He said, no, we we help people build businesses. And I said, well, that's not something I want to do. And he said, well, if you ever decide that way, you know, um, you know, get with us. So maybe a month later, I accidentally called him again. <laughs> and he, he said, well, we should probably talk. So I got hooked up with these guys. They teach you how to build your business. You know, of course, you you pay them for it. Of course. But they are the best partners. I mean, I've become friends with these guys. 
You know, they're always there for me whenever I have a question. The resources are phenomenal. So if anybody out there has got a really good idea and you don't know where to go with it, contact Ideal Strategic Partners. They are phenomenal. You know, it's funny how you said that that worked out that way. It's almost like uh, God, the universe, uh, your spirit animal or whatever was directing your fingers uh, and the buttons you were pressing to call the, the wrong number. It was like, do it. And then you said, nah. And they said, all right, we're going to try this again. <laughs> and God, God has guided us through this whole thing. There's, there's, I'm a firm believer in that things happen for a reason. Yes. And we have met so many good people through this journey and have become friends with them. And we're all like-minded people, you know, and it's that right there has been a blessing in itself. You know, yeah, we're, we're turning out a product. We're, we're successful with it. Um, that's really cool. But just the people we're meeting is just phenomenal. Yeah. That's well, it's all part of the Jeep family. And, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, Toyota earlier. What, uh, what kind of ratio are you getting on, on this product? Is it more Jeep than Toyota or, and, and is it just Jeep and Toyota that you're making this for? Well, we're not making them for Toyotas yet. That's but you're, probably but you're planning gonna, on it is what you're. Yeah. Um, th- I'm a Jeep guy. I know nothing about Toyotas. You God know, bless I you. Mean, I, <laughs> I like them. You know, they're yeah. not my cup. Of, they're not my cup. Of no, tea, of but, course. You know, I like them. And um, but we get so many of them guys because we go to the overlanding shows and they're huge. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean, they're huge there. Right. And they, when are you going to build the Tacoma? And there's three generations of Tacoma. So oh, no. there's a good market there. Yeah. You know, and we've done the market research on it. They those guys. They they spend money on their stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was told just the other day that overlanders will spend a uh, full price for things. They have no problem with uh, not like the, uh, the 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 regular jeeper that's really cheap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and they're right though. I mean, these guys if they want something, they buy it. Mm-hmm. But they also recognize something that's going to work for them too. Right. You know, so it, it works out really well with that. Well, very cool. So no Toyota yet, but it's it's coming. So I, I got to mention, uh, I, I'm not a a big Bronco fan, at least not one of this uh, this uh, th- yeah this century. But the the one from '67 was pretty nice. So any plans for the Bronco folks or? Yeah, um, everything in the you know I I'm new to the business world, and I found that everything is done on market research. There's not a lot of Broncos out there yet. Right, you know, we think there is because it's the new thing, but there's not a lot of them out there yet. Well, and you went to you were SEMA 2021. That's all there was there, right? I mean, the the year or so brand new, yeah. yeah, the year or so before that, it was that like gladiators were everywhere. <laughs> exactly. And are they? Then you go to what? What are they doing to their Broncos? Right. You know. And so it's all we we have a you know through Ideal Strategic Partners. I have a marketing team. And when I bring something up, they said, let's let's see what's out there, you know. And right now they're telling us, wait on the Bronco. You know, we, we don't have enough research on them yet. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's you well, only have so many dollars to spend. Yeah, you don't want to waste uh, money having building a bunch of stuff and not, and just this, this sitting on it. Um, so, oh, and that's a good question. Do you actually have to store uh, these things or do you have them built on demand? No, we, we, keep, uh, we keep 15 of them in stock at all times. And then, you know, uh, through Sam in Ohio there, he, he ships them out as they're ordered. Mm -hmm. Since, since we, we went in, we actually, our production units actually started coming out in April. And since April, we've sold 76 of them. Wow. And that's with just our website. Mm -hmm. We're really not anybody knowing who we are going to three shows, uh, the Moore Expo, um, actually, yeah, three shows. Um, and then where I seen you at um, uh, Borfest, mm-hmm. and then uh, we went to the Overland Expo East in Virginia, and had such good feedback. And Brooke does a great job with our with our social media. Our ambassadors do a good job, but still, people don't know who we are. Right? You know, I I get people that call me and say, "I've been looking for something like this for five years." You know, and so we're getting our name out there, and it's it's. We went from, you know, we would get one or two here, 
to we're doing anywhere from three to seven a week now shipping. But we're, our goal is to keep 15 in stock at all times. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a lot of room. So as they go out, he builds, you know. Right. So uh, what kind of uh, delivery times are, are people looking at when they uh, order one of these things? And when they order one, we ship it within 48 hours. Okay. And then however long it takes UPS or yeah. FedEx or whoever's doing it. I would assume and UPS because of the size and weight. Yep, UPS is our is our shipper, and um, amazingly, ninety nine percent of our stuff goes out west. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, very interesting. Well, we've already mentioned uh, the Instagram account, but uh, tell the tell the folks about your your social media stuff. Or if it's more than Instagram, I mean, I, I'm assuming you got Facebook, maybe the the TikTok, uh, or uh, um, you know, just uh, where, where can people find? Uh, the people love looking at uh, pictures and stuff, especially at dogs. You got several pictures of dogs here on the Instagram. Yeah, we have our our cargo dogs that are on there. Different people send us pictures. So, of course, we've got our website at cargo dot dog. Mm -hmm. um, we're on Instagram at cargo dog twenty twenty one and Facebook at cargo dog. Very cool. Have you ever heard of Brown Dog Motor Mounts? You were a TJ owner. Did you ever uh, put uh, uh, aftermarket? I remember the name. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, that's the dog thing made me uh, made me think of that. I, I have the Brown Dog Motor Mounts on my XJ, and uh, yeah, I was just thinking of uh, maybe there's a a, a, a marketing uh, thing that you guys could do. Get all the dogs together, the dog pound. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, Mike, it's funny because you know when you try to come up with a name and in that, you know, it's like I don't know what to call this, you know. And I was just jotting stuff down and I was reading them off to my wife, and I find, I said cargo dog. She goes, I kind of like that. And I go, really? And she goes, Yeah, I kind of like that. And we get a lot of comments on our logo. You know, people love the logo, and it's red, white, and blue because it is made in the USA, and actually. Everything but our LED lighting, which we're working on now to get our US, the USA, everything on that is USA made. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. No, and that, that, I was very adamant about that. I mean, I know people build stuff overseas. I have no problem with that. But we're from Michigan. It's a manufacturing state. You know, I, I'm, I watched friends and families lose jobs, mm -hmm. you know, and I said, I'm building my stuff here. And that's that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And how many guys proudly put on the side of their uh, product made in China? <laughs> but I proudly put made in the USA on mine. Absolutely. So speaking of logos, do you guys have uh, stickers? You know how Jeepers love stickers. Do you get a sticker when you buy one of these things? Maybe a sticker per box or something? We actually, we put, put them on the box like you see in the pictures. Mm -hmm. We give two with every box. Oh, perfect. And if you order a bracket, you get another one with that. And we give them away at the shows constantly. People love them. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think we talked about it in the, the proper in the interview itself about the bracket. Tell, tell me real quick about the bracket. Right. So a JKU or a JLU owner to, to run the small side jump seat requires a bracket because on those models, the small jump seat actually hooks to the big seat. Mm -hmm. So we make a bracket that bolts down where the the big seat would bolt on that side and then you bolt the seat to it and once once it's on your your small seat you can just leave it out and the seat belt bolts to it too oh very nice yeah i would yeah. think that you would definitely have to have that what's the uh, what's the bracket uh, cost you the bracket's 90. okay so yep. uh you get a like about fifteen hundred dollars for the cargo setup and then another 90 uh for the for the bracket and now you've got uh, a seat in the back and uh, once you have the seat installed with the bracket you can or cannot open that cargo area underneath the seat. Well, the, no, you remove that side. You oh, actually okay. Remove, so it goes yep. down in. It, you remove that one out of there. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. That, because my next question was, how high are you sitting up in the uh, <laughs> in the back right. seat? That could be an advantage too. I mean, you're, the kid could see really good. <laughs> right. So you and remove it, that cargo, the the the, the driver side cargo. Uh, uh, box and then put the seat in there with the bracket and you have to have the bracket because you need to attach it on the side like it would be from the factory exactly except for the gladiator the gladiator seat it has two separate pedestals that you know it doesn't require the bracket oh and the other thing i was going to ask and i should have done this a lot sooner there's absolutely no cutting or welding or anything it just uses the factory mounting points for the seats no fabrication at all is a well. I'll take that back. We'll get into that. 
you actually use the factory seat bolts, mm-hmm. so you don't even need the heart any new different Perfect. hardware. So right. you use them. The only fabrication you have to do is the JLUs have these little plastic nuts that the the floor mats uh, that hold the floor mats. Mm-hmm. So you take the plastic nut off and the stud on there, you have to cut about a quarter of an inch off of it. You can still put the nut back on if you want to later, mm-hmm. but that keeps you from dimpling the bottom of your box. Gotcha. Well, that seems, so that's the only That the only seems really simple. I mean, anybody can do that. I mean, a good pair of diagonal cutters should be able to take care of that. Yeah, and it, I've had guys that, you know, have just put it in anyways, and they said, yeah, put a little dimple in the bottom well, of the box. Nobody's going to see it. I mean, exactly. it's got a lid, so yeah, now you, now you don't have to do anything except put, put the box in there. Well, really cool. I'm hoping to see more about these things and uh, hear more about them, too. So, Mike, thank you a lot for being here with us, and uh, I, I would say good luck on the product, but I think you're having a lot of luck already. I mean, uh, just only being doing, doing it this long and getting awards at SEMA and the whole nine yards. Yeah, we've been blessed, and and I appreciate you having me on. Uh, um, This is awesome. Thank you. A big thank you to Mike Pulaski, the founder of Cargo Dog, for joining us on tonight's show. It was great having you, Mike, and we really appreciate all the valuable insights you shared with our listeners. You can find uh, Mike and uh, Cargo Dog online, and their social media uh, on Instagram is Cargo Dog Twenty Twenty One. They offer innovative product design specifically for Jeep enthusiasts with storage solutions. They are always coming up with new ideas to help make your Jeep experience even better. On our next Friday interview, we have a special guest interview with Greg Randolph, VP of Marketing at Dect. That's Dect.com, a leading manufacturer of Jeep drawer systems. If you're a Jeep enthusiast or interested in a great accessory for your Jeep Gladiator, you do not want to miss this interview. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Jeep Talk Show. Thanks again for our amazing guest, Mike Pulaski of Cargo.Dog, for sharing his insights and experiences with us. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoy bringing you this show. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter to stay up to date on all the latest Jeep news, events, and product reviews. And if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future episodes, please visit jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and drop us a line. We love hearing from you. Hey everyone, just a quick reminder that today is Friday, and that's Remember Everyone Deployed Day. It's a day where we show our support for brave men and women who are currently serving overseas. They're out there sacrificing so much for our country, and it's important that we take a moment to remember and honor them. If you can, wear something red today to show your solidarity with our troops. Remember, even a small gesture can go a long way in showing our appreciation for their service. Let's keep our deployed troops in our thoughts and prayers and thank them for their sacrifices. Thanks for tuning in, Jeepers. Until next time, keep on jeeping. Broadcasting since 2010.